Good morning and welcome to the Power in the Word broadcast of the Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is let's do it God's way. Expect a blessing. Let's listen. Let's bow our heads in humble submission to the Father who's here today. We come today, Lord, recognizing that you are God. We understand that you're God and we're not. We understand, Lord, that <clears throat> you have not just simply brought us part of the way. From the very beginning of our existence up until this present time, over hills, through valleys, ups, downs, pains, gains, divorces, sicknesses, deaths of loved ones, disappointments, out of all of the things you have brought us all the way up until this point and we don't want to go any further in this service today without saying thank you. We can't take credit for anything you brought us. And we understand now, Lord, that there's never a time that we don't need you. We need you then, we need you now, we need you tomorrow if we make it to tomorrow. So since we might not make it to tomorrow, we're going to praise you right now. At this moment, we praise you. We thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, to shake ourselves from ourselves so that we can hear your word today. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary. The blood, the blood, the blood. I mean, you died, but we thank you that early Sunday morning you got up. Yeah, we thank you for that. And I ask that you would bless each person here today through your word. Amen. And I'm going to ask now that you would turn to 1 John, the second chapter. Praise God. And uh, we're going to look uh, at verse uh, 6. And I want to tell my, my, my young folks here, my teenagers and my young folks, this sermon is for you too. And so, uh, if you, it's for you too. It's for you. It's just, not, it's just not for old folks. It's for you. You just might be blessed this morning. Uh, these words, not, not only for the old folks, but it's for you as well. And it says here in 1 John, the second chapter, verse 3, well, verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. While you all are standing, I really want you to hear this. This is the word. This is God speaking directly to you. He's already spoken to me this week, and I said, Lord, have mercy. He's speaking to you. I'm going to say it again. He, and that word he means she too, he that sayeth, 
he abided in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. The bottom line is, you ought to show some sign. Maybe said, you really, really should. You really should. Turn to somebody and say, you ought to show some sign. The point I'm trying to say is that when you talk it, or when you verbalize something about yourself, then you ought to be able to show evidence or a sign that what you said is true. If you say you're a member of a church, then if you are a member of a church, but you barely show up and you don't operate, you don't cooperate and you don't operate in the church, then it's a good possibility that you are, although you have the verbal knowledge, but you have not shown any visible evidence that you truly are. And that's all what John was saying this morning because he tells us here in 1 John 2 and 6, he says, he that saith he abideth in him all to himself also to walk even as he walked. Let's just stop there for a minute. I want you to, I want you to look at this. Now notice it said this. It says, he that saith he abide in him or he that saith that he abide in God. Now that word saith, it means that the person who constantly says, I'm a child of God. Me and God got a thing going on. I'm connected to God. I love the Lord. And that word abide, it simply means in constant communication. That word abide means uh, I'm converted. That word abide means I have an ongoing relationship with the Lord. Everybody say an ongoing relationship. The point I'm trying to say is that the word abide, it simply means that it's another word of saying, I am a child of God. And we know what it takes to be a child of God. You cannot get to God and you cannot have fellowship with God uh, until you go through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. And no man can come to the Father except by me. And so the point I'm trying to say, that once we express a belief in Jesus Christ, at that moment, we are part of the family of God, and we are children of God. And then on top of that, if you are a child of God, the scriptures suggest to us that you ought not be ashamed to declare and tell others that you are a child of God. The, the, the scripture says here, thank you, Holy Spirit, those who constantly say that they are children of God or they are connected with God or they abide in God. Everybody say abide. That, that, that word abide is the same word that Jesus used in John, the 15th chapter, when he talks about how, how that a branch, you, know, you got to abide in the Lord, and he used an example of a vine and a branch, and how that the vine uh, supplies, supplies sap to the branches. In other words, when that branch is connected to the vine, what that what that, what that vine does, it transfers sap, it transfers, transfers nutrients to the branches and all of a sudden those branches turn and the branches produce and the branches produce fruit. What I'm trying to say is simply this, yeah, it, it would be foolish to say this is a grapevine, everybody say grapevine, but all of a sudden this branch that's connected to the grapevine start producing lemons. It's obvious to them, yeah, because if, if this branch is connected to the vine and receiving sap from the, yeah, the vine, then it should produce, it should, it should bear a similarity to the vine. In other words, if it's a grapevine, then it ought to be, be, be showing resemblance of grapes. Is that right? So if we say we are connected with God and we said that we're connected with Jesus Christ, then by, by the mere fact that we're connected with him, somewhere, somehow, we should resemble him. The fruit that 
we bear and the life that we live should resemble Jesus Christ because the more you spend time with him, the more you ought to look just like him. And so what's the use, choir members and preachers and everybody here, what's the use of saying, I am a child of God, me and God got a thing going on, but yet you do not walk as Jesus walked. And so, and so John says this. He said, those of us who talk about that we are children of God, there are some things that we ought to do. Everybody say, oh. That, that is right there in the verse. I'm, I'm not making it up. It says, ought. It says, he that said he abideth in him ought himself. In other words, the very person who stands up and say they are children of God, there is, he, he says, ought to also himself. And that word ought means something that they should do. That word ought means obligated. That word uh, ought, it means uh, something that needs to be done. And that word also means something else added. Everybody say also. You know what I found out? You don't have to say, man, I know this is a fact. How many of y'all, uh, how many of y'all have a job? Raise your hand. Y'all be standing up and shouting right now. It's a lot of folks looking for jobs. I tell you what you do. I tell you what you do. Uh, you need to be thankful for your job. I'm gonna tell you why. If you quit tomorrow, there'd be 15 folks trying to get your job. Okay, but okay, okay. Have you ever noticed this? That on most of these jobs, in order for you to be a success on these jobs, you have to deal with the also. Y'all ain't got it that then. You see, the job description will say this and that and that and that. And you say, yeah, I can do that. But then when you get on these jobs, you will find out there's, all, there's, there's, also, there's always some also. There's always some stuff added. There's always some stuff you got to do. And if you say, that's not a part of my job description... You better not say that. That's not a part of my job description. So you got to be able to deal with the also because if you're working on that job, you got to deal with the also as well. There's responsibilities with that job. And just getting married, just walking down the aisle and say I do is one thing, but you got to deal with the also as well. And so those people who say, I am a child of God, they ought to also themselves. What, what should we do? There's something else you got to do. And what I'm saying is, what, what John is telling us today, you got to do more than just simply talk this thing. But the point I'm trying to say is that those of us who testify about the goodness of Jesus, and we testify that we're with the Lord, we have a responsibility, watch this, to walk as he walked to walk as he, everybody say walk as he walked. That's what I'm talking Hey, talking is one thing, but you got to walk. Hey, hey, not only must you declare, but you got to demonstrate. Declaring is one thing, but you got to demonstrate with your life that you are a child of God. You got to show that you have the DNA of God by walking as Je the scripture says, walk as Jesus walked. In other words, your walk ought to be different. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, they are new creatures. Hey, if you are a new creature, you're supposed to have a new walk. This is not a popular sermon is because it? it's telling us that we got to live holy. It says walk, you got to walk. It's about your walk. The word walk is parapipto. It means your life. It means your everyday life. You should walk as Jesus walked. See, what I'm trying to tell you here, young people and everybody here, just because everybody is doing it does not make it right. I'm trying to help y'all just because it's popular, just because everybody's doing it, everybody's wearing it, everybody's watching it, everybody, everybody, everybody. But guess what? 
Everybody didn't save your soul. Everybody didn't die on the cross. Everybody didn't shed his blood. Jesus shed his blood. And our example of how we ought to live ought to be Jesus Christ. We're supposed to walk as he walked. question is, Pastor, now the question is, Pastor, okay, that sounds good, Pastor, but what's the age group on that? I mean, is this for people 50 and up? Because, yeah, I, I know what that's for. That's for folks 50 years old and up. Anybody that's 49 years old and on down really don't have to do all that stuff about walking like Jesus walked and trying to be holy and trying to live according to what Jesus lived because if, if, if they did that you might lose some friends if, 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 if we tried to walk like Jesus walked as a young person I might lose my man I might lose my woman I might I lose some stuff if I if, you know that's for old folks who are too tired to do stuff now Y'all look at me now. Please look at this. John said these words. If we say that we are abide in God, then we ought to walk as Jesus walked. And that means teenagers, eight-year-olds, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that verse is for you. And everything you do, you're supposed to, your example in life is not Beyonce. Now that's, she getting old now. Who's some of the, who's some of the, who's some of the, who's some of the folks that's everybody trying to be like? She's not the example now. Jesus is your example. And you've, got to, and you've got to live in such a way to say every day of my life, Lord, now that I know, I know I'm a child of God, I know I'm a member of the church, and so now, Lord, give me the strength and power to walk as you walk. I want to walk as you walk. I want to walk just like you walk. Now, the question is, hold it. Somebody said, hold it. How did Jesus walk? Reverend, I would walk like him, but I don't know how he walked. Well, let me tell you how he walked. Somebody said, well, how can I walk like he walked? You need to study God's word. And when you study God's word, he'll show you what's required of you. But just in case you missed it, let me give you a few pointers. Let me tell you how Jesus walked. First of all, he walked with a purpose in mind. And his whole purpose was, was to please the Father. Everything that Jesus did, he wanted to please the Father. And he wanted to do the Father's will. Not one time, Jesus always said, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. And that's how we're all supposed to live. It's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. And we should never say, well, I know I shouldn't do that, but I feel, I think. That's what got you in trouble the last time. It's not about what you feel. It's not about what you think. It's about Jesus Christ. Everybody say Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus, and our whole goal should be, I want to please him and nobody else. I, 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 you, let me tell you, don't you ever try to do anything to please me. I, I got to say that. No, no, I, I got to please the pastor. I feel sorry for you. Don't you do a one, don't you do one thing to try to please me. You better not. What you should be trying to do is please God. And what pleases God is faith. Whether therefore you eat or drink, what you do all to the glory of God. Another thing, uh, the Jesus, yeah, he walked in prayer. He didn't do anything without prayer. Praise God. Before he chose the 12 disciples, he prayed. Before he did miracles, he prayed. Even early in the morning, he would get up, Mark 1, and he'd pray. And that's how, the praise God, that's how we ought to walk. We ought to walk in prayer. Are you really getting it? I mean, really, 
Sometimes I, I, some, some I, I preach, sometimes I wonder. I said, Lord, do they really see it? I know some of you really see it. The bottom line is you are not living for yourself now. It's not about you at all now. It's not about what you want. It's about what the Lord wants. It's about what the Lord requires of you. And he requires all of you. Jesus walked. As he walked, he carried a cross. And that cross represents obedience. And I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot walk in his steps without obeying Jesus Christ. Your cross is whatever the Lord requires of you. That cross represents suffering. Look at me now. It's amazing to me. We, Lord, help me, Jesus. Please help me, Lord. Please. It's amazing to me how that we become children of God, young or whatever, and we think that now... Since I'm a child of God, everything's going to work out all right. I'm not going to be talked about. I'm not going to suffer. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. But let me tell you, if you do it God's way, you will have to suffer some time. Because I'm going to tell you, I got to tell you, I, I, when, I, I, please say, when you are obedient to the Lord, sometimes it hurts. Because your flesh, your flesh says, do it. Your flesh says, this is it. But the Spirit said, this is not it. This is not what the Lord requires. And then what makes it hurt is you want to do it so bad, but you know that the, the, the Lord does not require that. And you go ahead and do it God's way. And the flesh start crying. And the flesh start complaining. And the flesh start pouting. But you got to tell that flesh, get behind me. And then with Satan, you got to tell Satan to go on where you need to go because I'm going to do it God's way. Somebody said, Pastor, I can't do it. I, I can't. I can't do it. I mean, one more thing. Jesus also walked in power. Everything Jesus did, he was led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot walk in the steps of Jesus Christ unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus had love. Jesus had joy. Jesus uh, had peace. Jesus was kind. Jesus was good. Jesus had gentleness. Jesus had self-control. Jesus was faithful. Jesus forgave folks that mistreated them. Jesus had love. And I'm going to tell you right now, the only way you can do that, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, what to happen is, once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it won't be you that's loving. It'll be the God in you that's loving. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it won't be you that's forgiven. It'll be the Holy Spirit that's forgiven. Why? Because the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance against such there is no law. And one of the hardest things to do is to love folks that don't love you. That's the hardest thing to do is to forgive folks that have mistreated you. But if you got the Holy Spirit and if you want to walk as Jesus walked, look what he did on Calvary's cross. The very people that hung him there, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And just as he forgave them, we got to learn to forgive our brothers and sisters. We got to learn to love our enemies. And we got to learn to live holy. That's it. And with that same power, Jesus got up from the grave. And somebody said, Pastor, I, I can't do it. I, 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 just, I, I hear you, Pastor, but you don't know what I'm off into right now, man. You, you don't seem to understand. Yes, I understand. But I'm going to let you know right now, I got to, can I quote this one scripture? Lord, help us. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now, unto him that is able. You see, you're not able. 
And I'm not, I'm not able, Pastor, y'all, I'm not able. But guess, God is able. He said, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that worketh in us. You got some power in you that worketh in you and through you. You got to let the Holy Spirit work in you. I've heard you long enough. That's it. Pastor. Sometimes I fail, Pastor. Sometimes I fail, Pastor. I'll be trying, but I fail. <laughs> Can I be truthful with you? Sometimes I fail. Pastor, you don't know, sometimes I, I be trying and I fall. Sometimes I fall. Sometimes when you want to do good, evil is there. But there's one thing I can say to all of you here, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. He knows that you've fallen. He knows that sometimes you fail. He don't like your sin, but he loves you. And the good news is, my brothers and sisters, he's working on you. And, and now you're not, we're not what we ought to be right now. And we're a long way from it. But we, everybody say hallelujah with me. I'm going to sit down here and then Reverend Williams coming up. I, I'm going to close with 1 John 3, 1 and 2. It says, behold. Everybody say behold. behold. What manner as First John 3, 1 through 2, Behold what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Let me tell you, I come to tell you here, it's a blessing to be called the child of God. And we are, not only are we called the children of God, we are the children of God. And since we are the children of God, the world does not know us. But guess what? Beloved, now are we the sons of God, but it doth not yet appeal what we shall be. But one of these days, I might fall right now. I have come short right now. But one of these days, we're going to look just like him. One of these days, Jesus Christ is coming back. And that's what keeps me going, is that it won't be this way always. One day, Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. And we're going to look just like him. For we shall see him just as he is. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at ppbc.com. 1912 at AOL.com or call our church office at 501 372 4429, where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and/or Sunday morning at 5 a.m. Be blessed and have a productive day.